Good day. Today I'm going to show you how to deal with calculus when you are given dx in brackets. So there are two situations that you have to look at. If there is one term in the bottom, let's just say there's only one term in the denominator, what you have to do is to split them. What I mean is that you split it in this way. And I'll explain why in a moment. So you have to split it in this way. Now the thing about dx, the notation is very important because there is one mark loss if the notation is not correct. So for you to get full marks, make sure your notation is correct. So basically this dx will remain throughout only on the step where we derive. That's when we're going to remove it. So it's going to remain throughout. As long as we're still manipulating what's inside the bracket, this dx is still going to remain. But when we reach the step where we now derive, that's when we're going to remove the dx and the bracket. So let me explain. Why do we have to split it in this way? Why do we have to split this? So basically when you are adding fractions and they've got the same denominator, let's just say 2 over 3 plus 5 over 3, what you do is that you just write that denominator once and then you basically add the top. So then this becomes 2 plus 5 over 3. So basically what we're doing is that we're reversing the process. When you see them sharing a denominator, you can split them. So we're just reversing the process. So whenever there is one term at the bottom, you have to split them. What about when there is two terms or more? So what if we have got two terms or more? For instance, let's just say we've got something like this. So when we've got two terms or more, what we have to do is to factorize. We'll get to that in the next uh, exercise. But right now we're dealing with one term. So when there is one term, you have to split. But when there is two terms, you have to factorize. So just remember that. So let's continue. So after splitting them, we notice that the bases are the same. So all we have to do is to subtract the exponents. But notice, because I am not deriving i still have the x so then i'm going to write x then it's going to be 3 minus 1 which is 2 and then this side x over x is 1 it just cancels out and then this side whenever you've got something like this let's just say we've got maybe 2 and we've got x squared whenever you want to remove something from the denominator and put it to the numerator or something from the numerator and put it to the denominator the sign of the exponent changes so for instance this is a denominator so you want to remove it from the denominator you want to put it to the numerator so the sign of the exponent will change so basically this becomes 5 to the power, 5x to the power of 1 just before i continue if you want to be tutored either online or physically online it doesn't matter where you are or which country you are at you can still be tutored so we offer cheap online lessons and if you want to be tutored physically we can still make an arrangement so call or whatsapp this number but preferably please whatsapp uh, this number and then we will take it from there so what i do is that i tutor people uh, five days a week online and I give tests once a week so that I can check your improvements. So why are we doing all this? The reason why we're doing all this, why are we not deriving immediately? The reason why we're not deriving immediately is because the whole thing is not in a differentiable form. What do I mean differentiable form? A differentiable form is anything that is in the form of a uh, times x to the power of n right so anything in that form for instance maybe 2x cubed this is in a differentiable form so unless something is in a differentiable form we cannot derive it right so this is not in a differentiable form so we can't derive it so hence we're doing this so that we can put it in a differentiable form notice everything here is in a differentiable form right what we need is just a coefficient a variable and an exponent that's what we can derive but when it's in fraction form, we cannot derive it. So now that this is in a differentiable form, I can now derive. Now notice, now that I'm deriving, that's when I do not put the dx, right? That's when I don't put the dx and the brackets. So let's derive. So this is going to become 2x. Well, this is a constant. It disappears. This one is going to become minus 5x to the power of minus 2, right? Because it's going to be negative 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. So hence, this is 
the derivative so that's the answer but let's just say they say leave your answer to positive exponents if they say leave your answer to positive exponents now we have to change this negative into a positive now whenever we want to change the exponents if something is a denominator it will become a numerator or if that thing is a numerator it will become a denominator for instance this exponent is negative so we want it to be positive so it means since this is part of a numerator we have to put it at the denominator so for instance if we have something like this let's just say we've got something like this since this is a numerator we're gonna have to make it a denominator and then the sign of the exponent will change all right so then this since it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a numerator and you want to change the sign it means that this is going to become a denominator so in the next step we can just make it 2x and then let me just shift it over there so we're going to make it 2x and then this is going to be 5 over x squared so it was a numerator so it became the denominator and the sign of the exponents changes and of course you can have your equals there equals does not come after dx that's what most students uh, that's the mistake that some students make so the equal sign comes before it yeah so just remember if you see one denominator you have to split it if you see two or more denominators it means you have to factorize all right here is another example so in this example notice that there are two terms in the denominator so if there are two or more terms in the denominator it means that you have to factorize now if you don't fully know how to factorize quadratic equations for instance let's just say you don't know how to factorize if there is a 2 in front of x squared then in the description below under the topic of this video so in this video uh, under the topic in youtube you just see the description so at the description you'll find the link to the video on how to factorize quadratic equations so you'll find it just below the topic on the description so let's factorize so notice i'm still keeping the dx because i'm not deriving i'm just manipulating this thing so then this will become 2x and then that side will become x right then this should be 2x minus 1 and that side is going to be x minus 5 okay so we fully factorized that part and then now this one of course the denominator cannot be factorized so we don't have to factorize it so even in trigonometry our goal whenever we factorize something we are trying to cancel so you see here we're factorizing so that we can cancel these two are exactly the same so they cancel so it means that we're left with x minus 5 notice the x is still there because i didn't yet derive i only manipulated right i only factorized and cancelled now that this is in a differentiable form we're also attempting to make this in a differentiable form yes it's true that everything here is in a differentiable form but they're all in a fraction so because they're all in a fraction it's not in a differentiable form so now that this is in a differentiable form we can find the derivative now let's find the derivative the derivative of x is one the derivative of a constant is zero it just disappears so the answer is one notice i didn't put the x because this time i have derived and of course we can have equal signs there and there we have it if you're enjoying this video please like and subscribe to my channel so that you can receive more videos like this all right here is a third example so in this particular example we have the square root of x5 then we've got minus 3x squared plus 2 root x then all over uh, square root of x cubed so there is one term in the denominator so it means we have to split right now whenever you've got this square root sign which we call radicals let's just say you've got three square root of x squared when you want to convert this into a non-radical because our goal is to make it in a, in a differentiable form so if you want to convert this into a non-radical you have to convert it into an exponential fraction so what i mean is that the exponent that is inside will go on top of the fraction and the exp and whatever is outside will go at the denominator of the exponential fraction and then that's what we have so we have an exponential fraction so let's split this stuff because we've got one denominator so then this means that this is gonna be square root of x5 all over square root of x cubed and then we're gonna have minus 3x squared over the square root of x cubed as well and then that's how we're going to have plus 2 square root of x over the square root of x cubed.
and of course we're gonna have to change these forms you can choose to change it even before splitting or you can choose to change it after splitting all right then this will become dx so then this is where to change it to exponential fraction so what is inside goes on top what is outside which is invisible to goes down and then this side what is inside goes on top what is outside which is an invisible 2 goes down so then this is going to be 3 over 2 all right then this side we've got 3x squared and then this side is going to be the same thing we're going to have x to the power of 3 over 2 and then this side we're going to have plus so then this there's an invisible one as an exponent and there's a invisible two outside so this is going to be one over two and then this side same thing x to the power of three over two all right so that is what we have so we still keep this dx because we're not deriving so then basically on the next step we have to subtract so we're going to have to subtract the exponents if you don't like fractions you can even use the calculator all right, so I just rewrote this. I just rewrote the previous step with nothing changed. All right, so now we're going to subtract. So then this is going to be, we have the same base, so we're going to subtract the exponent. So 5 over 2 minus 3 over 2 should just be 1. Yep. So then we don't need to write x to the power of 1. Then this side we're going to have, okay, so now when we've got a 3 there, this 3 is on top. If it was done, for instance, if we have something like this, let's just say we've got something like this. If we were subtracting the exponent, you will not write 3 as the answer. What you what you should notice is that the 3 is down, so there's an invisible 1 on top. So you actually write it as 1 over 3. Then you subtract the exponent. So when you subtract the exponent, it will be minus 1. So you have to be careful of that. So when if this 3 is down, do not write 3 as in 3. Don't write it like that. There is an invisible 1, so it's 1 over 3. What if you have two numbers, like let's just say you have 2 and you've got 3, and let's just say you've got x5 and x8. It's very simple. You'll just separate this. You'll just write 2 over 3 on the side. And then now you'll just subtract the exponents, x to the power of 5 minus x to the power of 8, or rather 5 minus 8, which is minus 3. So you would write it in this way. So basically, you're just splitting the number and the variable. So it's the same situation as if we had nothing on top and we've got a 3 down, there is an invisible 1. So you're splitting it as well. You're just saying 1 over 3, then 5 minus 8, which is minus 3. All right. So this, we've got 3 on top. It's the same as 3 over 1, which is just 3. And then from there, we're going to have to subtract. So 2 minus 3 over 2, which is the same as 2 minus 1, comma 5, which is, 1, comma 5, uh, which is 0, comma 5, which is just 1 over 2. Okay, then this side we're gonna have two, and then one over two minus three over two is the same as one. Uh, it's the same as half minus one and a half, which should be minus one. So it should be minus one. So this time we have to write it because it's a negative. All right. So now these are in a differentiable form, right? So since these are in the differentiable form, we can now derive. So when we derive, we remove the step where we've got uh, dx. So let's derive. So the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of this, 1 over 2 times negative 3 is negative 3 over 2. Right? Negative 3 over 2. And then from there, uh, 1 over 2 minus 1 is minus 1 over 2. Because we have to subtract. And then this side, minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. Then minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Let's just say the same if you answer to positive exponents, you want to make it a positive exponent. So if you want to make it a positive exponent, what will happen is that the negative exponent will just join the denominator. So then therefore, this will just be... Because remember, when you change the exponent, if we change the sign, whatever was the numerator will become the denominator. So then this will become that. And then this side... Um, you want to change that so it's going to be changed from the numerator and it's going to become a denominator so that's what we have 